All right, so let's continue our discussion of Banach spaces. Um, so let V be a normed space, meaning a vector space with a norm on it. And last time, a Banach space was defined to be um, a norm space such that the metric induced by this norm is complete. All Cauchy sequences converge. Um, so if you want to check that a norm space is a Banach space, you have to take a Cauchy sequence uh, and show that it converges in the space, which we did last time for the space of bounded continuous functions uh, on a metric space. Now, um, there's an alternative useful way of uh, checking to see if a space is a Banach space, which we'll use in a minute. Um, but uh, to state it, I need to introduce uh, a definition real quick. So let V in uh, be a sequence in V and I'm going to abuse notation and write subset of V even, even though that's a sequence, okay? Uh, I'm using this notation though. So this means let V in be a sequence in V. Um, the series, which is just right now an expression, just uh, chalk on a board right now, it's just a symbol. We say this series is summable if the sequence of partial sums, which are now elements in uh, the norm space, so if this sequence of partial sums uh, converges. Um, we say that the series Vn is absolutely summable if the series of uh, involving now these non-negative numbers uh, converges. Okay, so this is just like the definition of the convergence of um, a series of real numbers, which you dealt with in earlier analysis, and absolute convergence. Only here I'm using the terminology absolutely summable because this is the terminology Richard Melrose used, so I want to stick to what he's uh, using. Um, he's Australian, so I think maybe that has something to do with it. Um, so that's one of the unfortunate things about this is I can't tell if you're laughing, but I'm going to assume you're laughing. Um, okay, so absolutely summable means the sum of the absolute of the norms converges, um, and you have this theorem just like from uh, you know real analysis, which you saw at one point that if Vn, so if this uh, series is summable, is me missing a adjective there. If I have an absolutely summable series, then that the sequence of partial sums uh, this is a Cauchy sequence okay in the space V so again we're working through in a normed uh, space V all right and the proof is the same as uh, in the real uh, real numbers case. So proof I'll leave to you. This is just a simple exercise and this is 
same as for v equals r. Okay. Now notice I said something which, um, you know, was is strictly weaker than what you encounter in the case v equals r. In the case v equals r, you have the theorem that if I have an absolutely summable series, then it's summable, right? Every absolutely convergent series is convergent. Um, but I didn't say that here. I just said that the uh, sequence of partial sums is Cauchy, not con necessarily convergent. So when is the sequence of partial series convergent? When can I say that an absolutely summable series in this norm space uh, is summable? And I can say that precisely when it's a Banach space. So the theorem that we're going to prove is that um, V is a, bon a Banach space if and only if every absolutely summable series is summable. Okay? Okay, so this characterizes Banach spaces as those spaces for which this theorem you have from, you know, real analysis that every absolutely convergent series converges as precisely that. Every absolutely summable series is summable. And sometimes that is an easier um, property to verify than going through the whole uh, Cauchy business. Um, and sometimes it's exactly the same amount of work. Um, we'll use this when later when we deal with integration and measure theory to prove that the big LP spaces are uh, Banach spaces. But um, all right, so we have two directions to prove that uh, if V is a Banach space, then we get every absolutely summable series is summable. And this is uh, pretty straightforward, so one direction. Um, if V, suppose V is a Banach space, then if V in, if this series is absolutely summable by the previous theorem, which I didn't prove, but is very easy to prove, I get that the sequence of partial sums this is a Cauchy sequence in V. And because V is a Banach space, every Cauchy sequence converges. And therefore, converges in V. And therefore, the series is summable. OK? So that direction is simple enough. Let's go the opposite direction and show that every that the condition that every absolutely summable series is summable implies that V is a Banach space. So every absolutely summable series is summable. Now we want to show that every Cauchy sequence converges in V. So let Vn be a Cauchy in V. So what we're going to do is uh, we're in fact going to show that there's a subsequence of the sequence that converges. So what we're going to show so that 
this sequence has a convergent subsequence. Okay? And once we've done that, we're done. Because remember, back to your real analysis days, every, uh, if a Cauchy sequence has a convergent subsequence, then the entire sequence converges. Bn converges by metric space theory. All right, so real analysis stuff. Okay, so let's find this subsequence, and um, basically we're going to build this subsequence up by kind of speeding up the convergence of Vn, or if you like, speeding up the Cauchy-ness of Vn, okay? So uh, the fact that the sequence is Cauchy implies that uh, for all k natural number, there exists a natural number k, also a natural number, such that for all n, m bigger than or equal to n sub k, we have that the norm of v sub n minus the norm of v sub m is less than 2 to the minus k. All right, why did I choose 2 to the minus k? Because that's summable, all right, and you'll see. And um, so what we're, we're going to do is uh, build up essentially in uh, telescoping sum from these, from well-chosen guys. So um, define n sub k. What is this going to be? This is going to be equal to n sub 1 plus, plus n sub k. Okay. Then, so n sub 1 is less than n sub 2 is less than n sub 3, right? Because at each stage, I'm adding a natural number. So n sub 1 is e equal to capital N sub 1. n sub 2 is equal to capital N sub 1 plus n sub 2. These are natural numbers. So I'm always getting bigger at each stage. All right, so this is an increasing sequence of uh, integers. And for all k, n sub k is less than or equal to Uh, n sub k, capital N sub k, right? Because little n sub k is equal to some integers plus capital N sub k. All right? And so the v sub n sub k's are going to be uh, es essentially the guys which converge. All right? Thus, for all k natural number, I get that v sub n sub k plus 1 minus v sub n sub k. If I take the norm of that, so n sub k is bigger than or equal to capital N sub k. n sub k plus 1 is bigger than or equal to n sub k, which is bigger than or equal to capital N sub k. And therefore, by this condition, how the n sub k's are uh, chosen, so this, 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 and what's in blue tells me that this is going to be less than 2 to the minus k. All right? And therefore, thus, the sum v sub n sub k plus 1 minus v sub n sub k, this is absolutely summable, right? Because the norm of this is less than 2 to the minus k which uh, you can sum, right? And by our assumption that every absolutely summable series is summable, this implies that, uh, I didn't even say anything after that, is absolutely summable, 
which implies that this is summable. which implies a uh, limit as m or let me instead just finish with that, okay? Or i.e. the sequence of partial sums k equals 1 to m, v sub n sub k plus 1 minus v sub n sub k. this sequence of partial sums converges in V, okay? Okay, so to recap again, we started off with a Cauchy sequence. We kind of go out in the Cauchy sequence uh, far enough and pick certain guys so that they're pretty close to each other. And how close? So close uh, that the um, sum of their norms is finite, so that it's absolutely summable, and therefore uh, the series is summable by our assumption. Okay? But this is essentially, so a telescoping uh, sum. Thus, the series V sub N sub M, which equals, so the sequence V sub N sub M, which is sum from N equals 1 to M of V sub N sub K plus 1. Uh, let's see, let me put a minus 1 here. Minus V sub N sub K plus V sub N sub 1. N equals 1 to infinity. Converges in V and I'm done, right? So V sub N sub M is equal to this uh, telescoping sum plus, uh, so when I add this up, terms cancel, and I just pick up the last one, which is when I stick up N, M sub 1 here, minus uh, the first one, which is V sub N sub 1 here. So if I add on V sub N sub 1, I just pick up V sub N sub M. Now, as M goes to infinity, this converges to something, right, because this uh, sequence converges, and this is just fixed in M, right? So this sum converges, and therefore V sub N sub N converges, and thus this subsequence of our original Cauchy sequence converges, proving that the Cauchy sequence converges in V, and we're done, okay? Okay. So, um, Bonnach spaces, these are, <coughs> uh, you know, a nice generalization of the spaces that you worked with in real analysis and linear algebra, Rn, uh, Cn, and so on. But, okay, so what are kind of um, the analogs of matrices, right, which you did, had to use in calculus and linear algebra? This, and, uh, you know, is going to lead to our next topic, which is uh, operators and functionals. Okay? So operators being the analog of matrices that uh, take one uh, vector into another vector, functionals are, um, you know, kind of the analog of taking a vector and taking its dot product with a fixed vector, spitting out uh, a real number. So functionals will eat vectors and spit out um, you know, real or complex <coughs> numbers depending on uh, the field that you're working in. Okay? So let me, um, let me write down just kind of a, an example to keep in mind, okay, as far as, um, you know, uh, operators go, all right? So, I want you to keep this example in mind, which kind of was the whole reason for 
um, really a lot of, uh, of building all this machinery. I mean, the, this example came first, and then the machinery came, uh, you know, was built later to, to be able to say all we can about these kind of operators, so, or these kind of transformations. So, um, and, you know, depending on if you were in my class or not, maybe you saw a, a question um, about such a creature on an assignment or maybe on an exam. So let k be a function on uh, 0, 1 cross 0, 1, let's say into the complex numbers. Uh, and let's assume it's continuous for f in uh, a continuous function on 0, 1. We can define a new function from f, tf of x, uh, to be the integral from 0 to 1 of k of x, y times f of y dy. Now, these are things that I'm about to write a few things that you can just check by hand, but uh, you can then check then uh, tf is also a continuous function, okay? Uh, and it's linear in uh, the argument f, okay? And uh, for all lambda 1, lambda 2, and c, f1, f2, and uh, 0, 1, t lambda 1, f1 plus lambda 2, f2 equals lambda 1, t f1 plus lambda 2, t f2, okay? All right, and it has another property which I'm going to say in a minute, na namely that it's continuous on the space of uh, continuous functions. So we've already proven, right, that this space of uh, continuous functions on 0, 1, this is a Banach space, right? This was a, a special example of the space of bounded continuous functions on a metric space we considered before, right? Because on, a, on the closed and bounded interval 0, 1, every continuous function is bounded. So this is just uh, equal to C little uh, low, uh, subscript infinity of 0, 1. So we know this is a, a Banach space. And so this is an example of uh, um, what's called a, a linear operator. So definition, let V and W be vector spaces, so you should have seen a linear transformation. I'm going to call it a linear operator. I'm just recalling what it means to be linear. Um, let V and W be vector spaces. You say a map T from V to W is linear. So linear if for all lambda 1, lambda 2 in your field of scalars, if they're either R or C, uh, we, and for all V1, V2, and V, T of lambda 1, V1 plus lambda 2, V2 equals lambda 1, T, V1 plus lambda 2, T, V2. So, um, in a map from one uh, norm space, so so this is just kind of a note off to the side. This is how I'm going to be using, well, I'm not even going to write it down. Um, so, given two norm spaces, a linear map between them I will most of, often refer to as a linear operator. Um, Rather, just, or rather than, you know, linear transformation, which is what you probably heard in linear algebra, I'll refer to these as operators. Um, something I meant to say as well was, you know, why do we care about such a guy like this other than it looks nice, all right? 
you care about guys like these because, you know, operators of this form um, are essentially the inverse operators of uh, differential operators, okay? I mean, you know that from the fundamental theorem of calculus, the, any the inverse operation of taking a derivative is taking the, uh, is integrating, right? So, um, you know, it shouldn't be a surprise that the inverse operator, meaning if I take f as my data to some ODE, can be written as this, as uh, this kind of linear operator. Um, that shouldn't come as, as too much of a surprise. So, you know, that's why we care about them is that um, operators of this form arise, you know, as the inverses of taking di differential operators. Okay. Um, okay, so now in this class at least, we're not just interested in any old um, linear operator. We're going to be um, interested in a certain class of linear operators, those, so those which um, are continuous. So um, let me recall for you an equivalent, le equivalent way of saying that, uh, that a map is continuous. So, so this is just any map, any function, not necessarily a linear uh, operator, is continuous on V. If, and there's two ways to say this, um, you know, for every sequence V and converging to V, so let me write it this way. For all V and E, for all sequences converging to V, we obtain that T of V sub N converges to T of V, okay? And uh, an equivalent way of stating this uh, in terms of, you know, what one would call uh, topological notions is that the inverse image of open sets are open. So for all open U and W, the inverse image of U, which I will recall for you, is the set of V and capital V such that T, V is in U, okay? I'm not saying that T is invertible. That's the inverse image. The set is open in V, okay? Remember, the notion of an open set is that for every point in that set, uh, there's a small ball that's contained entirely in the set, uh, centered at that point. So, um, okay. Now, for linear maps, there's a very simple way or equivalent way of, of finding when it's continuous on a norm space, okay? Um, now, on finite dimensional spaces, any linear transformation, every linear transformation is continuous, I should say that, okay? Um, so, if you take any uh, linear operator from Rn to Rm, or Cn to Cm, or Rn to Cm, anything between two finite dimensional um, spaces, it will always be continuous if it's linear, okay? That is not always the case uh, between two Banach spaces, okay? Um, now, again, what, uh, is there a more efficient way of checking when something is continuous, or, or what's an equivalent way of saying that? Um, or a more useful way, uh, is the following characterization that we have. So, uh, 
a linear operator uh, t between two normed spaces now. So between no two normed spaces is continuous uh, if there exists a C positive such that for all V and capital V, if I take T of V and take its norm in W, this is less than or equal to a constant times the norm of V and capital V. Okay, um, now in this case we say, instead of saying that uh, T is a continuous linear operator, we say uh, T is a bounded linear operator, okay? So we don't really say continuous linear operator, operator, we say bounded linear operator. Now this doesn't mean the image of V is a bounded set in W, okay? That's not what this means. The only linear operator that takes the bounded set, that takes a, a vector space into a bounded set is the zero operator. So we're not saying that it's taking all of V to a bounded set, but what this inequality does say is that it takes bounded subsets of V to bounded subsets of W, okay? Okay. All right, so let's prove, uh, let me put a star by this condition so I don't have to write it out uh, so much. Um, So okay, so uh, let's go in this direction. So let's assume star and prove that uh, that this linear uh, operator T is continuous. Okay, and this is not too difficult to do. We'll use uh, this first, um, we'll use this first characterization of continuity. So v, V, and V, and suppose V sub n is a sequence in V converging to V, all right? Then by star, if I look at T sub V sub N minus T sub V norm uh, in W, this is less than or equal to a constant times the norm of V sub N minus, well, first off, I'm kind of using, let me add one little step. I'm using that it's a linear operator, meaning I can write this as T of V minus V sub N. And therefore, this is less than or equal to a constant times V uh, sub N minus V and capital V. And so the norm of T of V sub N minus T of V is less than or equal to some fixed constant, depending only on T, times V sub N minus V. This goes to zero as N goes to infinity, right? And therefore, by the squeeze theorem, this thing on the left must go to zero. It's always, you know, trivially bigger than or equal to zero. So, um, by the squeeze theorem. And therefore, T of V sub N converges to T, sub, uh, T of V. So that uh, takes care of one direction.
Okay, so we've shown that this boundedness property of t implies that t is continuous, uh, that the linear operator t is continuous. Um, now let's show that continuity implies this boundedness property. Okay, and so for the continuity guy, so I'm assuming t is continuous, I'm going to use the second uh, characterization of continuity here, okay? So then um, the inverse image of every open set in W is an open set in V. So the inverse image of the ball centered at the zero vector in W of radius one. Uh, so let me just recall this is a, um, a set of V in V such that T V is in the ball. This is, is an open set in V because the ball of radius one, so of, so this is the ball of elements uh, in W, such that their distance to zero is less than one. This must this is an open set in W, and therefore its inverse image must be an open set in V. Okay, so we have here um, zero, one, everything inside. Don't include the boundary. Um, this must be an open set in V, okay? And T takes one to the other. Now, um, what do I know? Zero is in here, and every linear transformation takes zero to zero, okay? So zero has to be in the inverse image because any linear uh, map takes zero to zero. So zero has to be um, in the inverse image. And therefore, since this uh, set is open, so this is zero, since the set is open, I can find a small ball of radius r centered at zero, which remains inside this set v, and therefore it gets sent to some other uh, set, which is a subset of w, okay? So this is the picture. Let me write uh, down the math that goes with it. Since t of zero equals zero, that implies zero is in t inverse of which implies, since this is open, okay, there exists an R positive such that the ball in V centered at zero of radius R is contained in T inverse of uh, the inverse image of the ball of radius one centered at zero in W, okay? Just look at the, the picture here. Okay. All right. Let V be in V. And let's not look at zero because, you know, V equals zero will satisfy this inequality no matter what C you have. So we just need to look at V uh, not equal to zero. I claim that I can take the constant to be uh, 2 over R, all right? Okay. Then if I take V and I rescale it, so, um, well, let me not write it as dividing V. Let me write it this way, R over 2 
link v v v times v. So this is a vector in capital V. What is its length? Uh, its length is r over 2. So if I take its length in v, this is equal to r over 2, which is less than r, which implies that r over 2 over v, v, is in the ball of radius r in v centered at 0. And therefore, so it has to be in this blue disk. And therefore, it gets mapped to something in this blue guy here. which is contained inside, remember, this big yellow thing was the ball of radius uh, 1 centered at 0. Uh, of radius 1 in W. And therefore, the length of T, R over 2, V, 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 W must be less than 1. And now, um, scalars pull out of linear transformation, so this comes out. And then it comes out of the norm by the homogeneity of the norm. And so I can divide through by, um, multiply through by 2 norm v over r, and I get that t of v norm w is less than uh, 2 over r norm v. Okay. And there's therefore star holds with c given by 2 over r. Okay. Okay, so um, continuous linear operators between norm spaces, we call them bounded linear operators because they satisfy this boundedness property, namely that they take bounded sets to bounded sets. Um, now, uh, it's going to become quite tedious for me to keep writing norm sub w, norm sub v, and so on. So I'm going to stop using the subscripts, OK? But it should be um, you know, pretty clear from you know, the context where the norm is. If I'm have a linear operator t from v to w, t of v, so uh, so if I have a lin bounded linear operator or linear operator from v to w, and you see me write norm of T V, you should uh, equate this to the norm of T V in W. Or if you see V, you should equate this, and V is an element of capital V, then you should interpret this as the norm of V in capital V. All right? So I'm dropping subscripts just to save having to write too much, and then it'll soon get tedious. Um, OK. so. A definition, um, you know, in fact, before I do that, let's take a look at uh, this linear operator I wrote up there a minute ago. Can we see that that's a bounded linear operator on uh, the space of continuous uh, functions? So. given by where k is a continuous function. This is a bounded linear operator. Okay, so um, it's clear, pretty clear to see that it's 
um, linear in F, right? Um, scalars pull out and so on. Let's check that it's bounded. So uh, recall that the norm on uh, C01 is the infinity norm. So um, let F be a continuous function. Recall the norm on this space is the infinity norm given by uh, soup of x in 0, 1, f of x, okay? Which is in fact a maximum. It's attained at a certain value, but I'll just write soup anyways. Um, and so now we want to estimate the norm of t of f of x in terms of the norm of f, right? That's what this boundedness property is. All right, then for all x in uh, 0, 1, this is equal to the integral of k, x, y, f of y, dy. Now, the absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value. So this is times the absolute value of k, x, y, times f of y, dy. Now, f of y for all y in 0, 1 is less than or equal to um, the infinity norm of f, so that only makes the integral bigger. Right? And, uh, the same thing for k, right? k is a continuous function on 0, 1 cross 0, 1, and therefore it's bounded by its, uh, it ha attains a max on this, um, on this set, being a continuous function. So I can also replace it by its infinity norm. And here you should interpret this as being the infinity norm on continuous functions on this set. Okay, so this infinity norm is the soup of k of x, y for x and y in 0, 1 cross 0, 1. Okay? Okay? And therefore, this equals, these are just two numbers. And this held, holds for all x, and therefore its supremum uh, is bounded by this number as well. So Tf Okay, so this is a bounded linear operator uh, with constant given by the infinity norm of k. This k is usually referred to as a kernel, so if I've said that before and haven't explained where that comes from or, or why I use that word. This is usually referred to as the kernel of this uh, um, linear operator. Okay? So there's a example for you. Have I already used up both boards? Yeah. I missed the big room that had um, three of these. Now, um, given two uh, norm spaces, V and W, we can consider the set of all uh, bounded linear operators uh, from V to W, which we denote by B, V, W, uh, scripty looking B, set of T. T is a bounded linear operator. So it's uh, not difficult to see again that, or to see that this is a vector space. Uh, so let me put this in K 
kind of a remark that, you know, it's clear that this is a vector space. This, you know, the sum of two linear transformations is a linear transformation or linear operator. Um, scalar multiple of a linear operator is a linear operator, and then those two um, operations, you know, preserve continuity. So this is clearly a vector space. Now, um, we can put a norm on this space. We define uh, the operator norm of an element uh, in here. This is defined to be the supremum uh, over all unit length uh, vectors v of t of v. So I want to you know, recall that this norm is being taken in w because t of v is an element in w. This norm here is uh, being taken in v because little v is um, an element in v. So um, maybe it's not clear at first, but let's go ahead and prove it that, in fact, uh, the operator norm is, in fact, an actual norm. So that this becomes a normed space. All right, it's just so the operator norm is an actual norm. It's not just a um, a norm because I said it is. Um, so let's uh, let's prove this. Um, so you know, it's not again. So um, it's not too difficult uh, to see. So let's prove definiteness, namely uh, the norm of t is 0 if and only if um, t is 0. So if t is a 0 operator, then clearly its norm is 0. Uh, suppose t of v equals 0. So this soup is 0 if and only if t of v is 0 for all unit length v. So suppose t is an operator so that t of v equals 0 for all unit length v, then that implies that uh, t of that 0 equals t of v equals t let me. All I'm saying is you rescale now, okay? 0 implies for all v and v take away 0, that 0 equals t okay so uh, t is the 0 uh, operator if its norm is 0. Uh, 2 homogeneity follows um, from the homogeneity of the norm uh, on W. So uh, lambda T, this is equal to, so the norm of lambda times T, this is equal to the soup of V equals 1 of lambda T V, and this is equal to soup equals 1 times lambda times TV, and if I take a set and multiply it by a non-negative number, then that non-negative number comes out of the soup. Hopefully it was one of the first exercises you were ever given on soups. And therefore this equals. Okay, and now, so that proves uh, homogeneity of the norm, and now the triangle inequality follows from the triangle inequality on, for the norm on uh, uh, a W again. So um, 
I take two operators and uh, two bounded linear operators, and I take an element of V with norm equal to 1, then S plus T applied to V norm. This is equal to SV plus TV. And by the triangle inequality for the norm on W, this is less than or equal to S times V plus T times V. And now uh, S times V, so again, V is a unit length uh, vector, is less than or equal to the sup over all those norms, which is, again, just the operator norm of S and then the operator norm of t, right? So I've proven that for all unit length v, s plus t applied to v in norm is less than or equal to this number here. And therefore, the supremum over all such uh, numbers as v ranges over all unit length vectors, which is the least upper bound of that set, must be uh, sit below this number here, which implies that. And therefore, uh, the operator norm is a norm both uh, in, in name and in actuality. So uh, if you like, what we did a minute ago here is we showed that uh, um, so coming back to over here for this bounded linear operator from continuous functions to continuous functions, what this uh, tells you, so first off, uh, if, f, if f has unit length, then I've shown that tf in L infinity norm is less than or equal to the L infinity norm of k. And therefore, I've shown that the operator norm of t, where t is defined over there, is less than or equal to uh, the operator norm for k. All right? We're actually a little wasteful there. Um, this is not equality, actually. But I'll let you think about that when you have free time. OK. So. We've talked about uh, bounded linear operators from one norm space to another. Um, what more can we say about this uh, new space we formed from you know, two uh, norm spaces? Um, when is this space complete, for example? Uh, what are sufficient conditions? And so theorem. If W is a Banach space, so again, V and W are, bon are norm spaces. If I assume W is a Banach space, then the space of bounded linear operators from V to W is a Banach space. Okay? No matter if V is a Banach space or not. Okay? OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, that characterization we had earlier uh, of when a norm space is a Banach space, OK, in terms of summability and absolute summability. All right, so um, suppose Tn is a sequence of elements of bounded uh, linear operators such that this constant C, uh, which is the sum of these norms, so exists as a real number. All right, so let's suppose that we have an absolutely uh, summable series of linear operators. 
And to show that this is a Banach space, we want to show want to show that this series is summable. Okay? Then by that uh, uh, theorem we have earlier that if you have a norm space such that every absolutely summable series is summable, then it's a Banach space. We conclude uh, the proof of the theorem. Okay? And how we're going to show this is summable is, again, kind of the same strategy we used uh, to prove that the space of bounded continuous functions uh, on a metric space is a Banach space. We're going to come up with a candidate for this, show that it's actually a bounded linear operator, and then that the convergence is uniform. Okay? Or not uniform, but the, the convergence is in the space in the operator norm. Okay? Okay. Um, so let me just make a, a let me just make a note of something real quick, which uh, I meant to write. Uh, you know what? Let's write it up there because that's where it belonged. But I didn't write it down, so let me just make a, a remark here. You know, the operator norm is defined for all unit length v. All right, but it automatically gives us a bound, um, you know. So, and you know, I'm, I'm moving a little quickly because um, maybe quicker than I should have, but. Okay, um, what was I going to say? First off, one thing I should have said is that this is act an actual finite number, okay, if I have a bounded linear operator. Because remember, uh, T, a bounded linear operator, implies there exists a constant, right, such that for all the, uh, in V, norm of T V is less than or equal to a constant times the norm of V, right? So when V has unit length, uh, this constant bounds that, that uh, satisfies this inequality bounds these numbers for all V with unit length. And in fact, this supremum is the smallest such C that I can uh, put here, okay? So that's the one comment I wanted to say, that this is an actual uh, well-defined thing. Okay, so. I wanted to say that, and then also um, now from rescaling, we get a bound uh, for all v uh, in terms of the operator norm. Then uh, if I take v and over its length and take its operator, or I take its uh, norm, so this is a unit length vector in V, I apply T to it, so that's always less than or equal to the soup over all uh, norm of uh, T times something where that something has unit length. But this is a linear operator so that this scalar comes out here and then comes out of the norm again by homogeneity, and therefore I get that TV is that, okay? so. Um, in short, the, the point of this remark was to say that, um, you know, this is not really maybe the best way to say it, but if I think of T acting on V as the product of T and V, then this says the norm of the product of T and V is less than or equal to uh, the product of the norms of T and V, okay? Sorry if I went a little quick there, and maybe you stopped and were wondering why is that even a real, why is that even a real thing? Why is that an actual number? Um, you know, what am I going on about? 
maybe I'm just a little overexcited about uh, teaching functional analysis because this is a, you know, kind of your your first, um, you know, adult analysis class, I will say. Um, okay. So back to the proof at hand. We have this series of absolutely summable uh, bounded linear operators. So the, some of the norms is convergent, meaning this uh, series sum is finite. And we want to show that uh, this series of the T sub n's is summable, so that this has a limit in the space of bounded linear operators. Okay? So we're going to come up with a candidate. Let V be in V. Then if I look at the sum of the norms of T sub n of V, so T sub n applied to V, this is bounded by, I mean, I'm writing it like this, but um, let me be a little more careful. Let m be a natural number, then um, sum from n equals 1 to m of t sub n of v norm. This is uh, less than or equal to sum from n equals 1 to m of t sub n times the norm of v. And so v, that's just a number that comes outside the sum. And the sum from n equals 1 to m uh, is bounded by the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of these non-negative numbers. So this is less than or equal to norm of v times t sub n equals c v. Okay, so for all m, I've shown that uh, this thing is bounded by c times uh, the norm of v. And therefore, the partial sums corresponding to this series of non-negative real numbers are bounded, and therefore that series con converges. So this partial sequence of partial sums of non-negative real numbers is bounded, which implies um, that it converges. I'll write T and B converges. Okay? Now think of T sub N of V as, so T sub N of V, this is an element in W for each N. Okay? So I've shown that um, that the series T sub n of v. This is absolutely summable in W, right? These are elements of W, and their norms is an absolutely convergent series of real numbers. Now, since W is a Banach space, every absolutely summable series is summable. And therefore, Summable. We therefore define a map from V to W via T sub V, or T of V is defined to be the limit as M goes to infinity, sum from N equals 1 to M of T sub N applied to V, right? which we've shown for every V is uh, a convergent uh, series in W, right? That was the point of everything that came before. For each V, um, this is a summable series, and we define its limit, which depends on V, as this map T going from V to W. Okay? 
So this is our candidate, which we'll show as a bounded linear operator. All right. So let's show it's linear. So t is linear. Why? For all lambda 1, lambda 2, and uh, the space of scalars, r or c, uh, v1, v2, and v, we have that t of lambda 1, v1, plus lambda 2, v2. This is, by definition, equal to limit as m goes to infinity of this sum, t sub n lambda 1 v1 plus lambda 2 v2. And now each t sub n is a linear operator, so I can write this as limit as m goes to infinity of uh, lambda 1 t v sub 1 plus lambda 2 t v sub 2, OK? And now, this thing here uh, converges to t of v as m goes to infinity. This thing here converges to t of v2 as m goes to infinity. And therefore, the limit of the sum is the uh, sum of the limits. So technically, I did not prove that you know, in a norm space, if I have two sequences converging to v1 and v2, then the sum of that sequence converges to uh, v1 plus v2. But it's the exact same proof as in R. All right? Just replace the absolute values with norms. Okay? So this should be uh, believable. All right? And therefore, t is a linear operator. Now, let's prove that it's a bounded linear operator. OK, so now we'll, we'll show that t is a bounded linear operator. Let v be in v, norm equal to 1, then T v, this is equal to the norm of the limit as m goes to infinity of n equals 1 to m, t sub n of v, norm. And norms of limits equal to limit of norms, uh, just like in the case of uh, um, R, so this is equal to limit as m goes to infinity of okay and now this is less than or equal to um, by the triangle inequality the triangle inequality for two things is this you know, implies a triangle in inequality for m things by induction. And which is less than or equal to uh, the norm of t sub n times, I shouldn't even say v, it's just less than or equal to the norm of t sub n. And this is precisely equal to uh, some of the norms, which I called c, this constant c, okay? which we know is finite, which we assumed is finite, right? So we assumed it was an absolutely summable series of um, bounded linear operators. So therefore, I've got that tv is less than or equal to c for all unit length v. And therefore, uh, 
which again by scaling arguments, this was for all v equals 1, which implies by scaling arguments t uh, for all v. Okay? Um, I guess I didn't have to start with norm of v equals 1 if I, that would have brought a norm of v here and then that would just be c times the norm of v instead of doing uh, this separate part. So change that in your notes. Um, but I'm up against the clock here, so I'm not going to do this on the board. Um, okay, so t is an actual bounded linear operator. Now let's show that uh, the sum of these operators converges to t um, in the operator norm. So now we claim that t equals oh, that's that's awful. in converges to t as m goes to infinity in the space of bounded linear operators, meaning in the operator norm. Okay? So I think uh, for this, this is the reason why I maybe accidentally wrote the norm of v equals 1 there. So let v be in v with norm of v equals 1. Then um, T of V minus T sum from N equals 1 to M of T sub N of V in norm. Now T uh, T is equal to the whole sum, n equals 1 to infinity, so I'll write this as um, maybe limit m prime goes to infinity of sum from n equals 1 to m prime t n v minus sum from n equals 1 to m t n v. And this equals limit m prime goes to infinity of sum from n equals m plus 1 m prime t sub n v in norm. And now this is less than or equal to the limit as m prime goes to infinity of, so um, the norm, so this is in fact equal to the limit of the norm, and then I use the triangle inequality to bring the norm inside. This is less than or equal to sum equals m plus 1 m prime t sub n of v. And now this is less than or equal to limit m prime goes to infinity of n equals m plus 1 to m prime t sub n norm because v has unit length, so t sub n, t sub n applied to v in norm is bounded by the operator norm of t sub n. And this equals sum from n equals m plus 1 to infinity of t sub n. Now, what we know, so this is just a series uh, involving real numbers. And we know if the series converges, then the tails have to go to 0. So this goes to 0 as m goes to infinity, right? Or I should, shouldn't do that step just yet. Sorry, I'm making mistakes. I'm up against the clock that I see in the back. So I, had, I started off with this quantity here and ended up bounding it by this thing uniformly in V. So that implies that the operator norm of T minus sum from N equals 1 to M of T sub N is less than or equal to sum from n equals m plus 1, operator norm of t sub n, and this last thing goes to 0 
as m goes to infinity because it's the tail of uh, a convergent series of non-negative terms, okay? And therefore, uh, the operator norm of t minus this um, partial sum goes to zero as n go m goes to infinity. And therefore, um, go, converges to t. All right? So you see, I mean, it had the same basic format that the last argument uh, did. Um, you know, you found a candidate, you showed it's in the space, and then you showed convergence of the space. So let me finish with a, a definition. If V is a norm space, then we denote V prime as the space of bounded linear operators from V to the space of scalars. All right, this is referred to uh, as the dual space of V. Okay, and since the space of scalars is always R or C, both of which are complete, I mean, they're the simplest examples of Banach spaces, um, by the theorem we just proved, since uh, the field of scalars is always complete, the norms, the dual space is always the Banach space. And let me just write here a simple example, which will be in the exercises, um, that in a sense, for all p between 1 and strictly less than infinity, I can identify the dual space of little lp as little lp prime, where p prime, this is now just a, a number bigger than uh, 1, where p prime and p satisfy uh, this relation. So in particular, um, the dual of L1 is L infinity. The dual of L2 is L2. This is very special about L2. But if I take the dual of L infinity, uh, P equals infinity, I would get P prime equals 1. This, in fact, does not equal little L1. This is something of a headache that manifests itself for the big LP spaces as well. Uh, and life would be a lot easier if this were the case, that, uh, that the dual of L infinity was L1, but unfortunately it's not, and that causes a headache. Um, and L2, little L2, this is the only LP that has this property, that its um, dual is given by little L2, all right? And in the exercises, I'll discuss precisely in what way you can identify the dual with this little LP prime um, in this way, okay? All right, we'll stop there. <laughs>